Let's consider the transport numbers in melts. On the one hand, complications associated with the ion solvation and solvent transfer disappear in melts. On the other hand, some new interesting features appear. Suppose that the U-shaped tube contains a molten salt and two metal electrodes, cathode and anode. Direct current flow through the melt as well as through an electrolyte solution is possible only if electrochemical transformations occur on the electrodes, obeying the Faraday laws. With the passage of one Faraday of electricity, one gram equivalent of metal will be released at the cathode. At the same time, some number of cations will enter the cathode compartment. And some number of anions will come out of this compartment. Thus, the amount of salt will decrease. In the anode compartment, one gram equivalent of the metal on the anode will dissolve. Some numbers of anions will enter this compartment. And some numbers of cations will be released from it. Thus, the amount of salt in the anode space will increase. Consequently, the electrolysis of the melt is accompanied by the transfer of a certain amount of salt from the cathode space to the anode one. It would seem that in this case the level of the melt in the anode compartment will increase and the transport number can be calculated from this change. In fact, the difference in levels causes the liquid to flow from the anode to the cathode and equalizes the levels. So, due to the appearance of a gravitational force opposing the flow of electrolyte from the cathode to the anode, it is impossible to determine the transport numbers in the melt, therefore, the anode and cathode compartments are separated by a porous membrane that prevents the melt flow flowing under the action of a gravitational force. Then, the transport number of the anion can be calculated from the increase in the volume of the anode compartment.
The described method is similar to the Hitterf method for electrolyte solutions, but in solutions it is used to calculate the change in concentration, not volume. The membrane, however, does not completely eliminate the gravity flow. Therefore, special cells have been proposed for measuring transport numbers in individual melts. In one of the cells, the electrical contact between the cathode and the anode spaces is realized through a porous membrane. But liquid overflow is possible through a capillary in which an air bubble is placed. Since the movement of the bubble occurs under the action of a small force, the overflow of liquid through the membrane is completely excluded. Transport numbers are calculated from the speed at which the bubble moves. In another cell design, hydrostatic flow is prevented by the horizontal arrangement of the system. The transfer numbers are determined by the movement of the liquid electrodes that confine the melt on both sides. There are also methods for determining transport numbers using radioactive traits, but we will not consider this here. In practice, usually used mixtures of molten electrolytes. Mixtures often have a lower melting point than the ingredients. Sometimes, when non-conductive melts are mixed, we can get systems with high electrical conductivity.